garage. Like and subscribe. Honor and privilege to rise today and table a bill calling for a framework on the access to and the use of cash. Our economy, like all economies, is driven by the exchange of goods and services, or in other words, commerce. Typically, the settlement for that exchange is currency. In a world where commerce is moving at a rapid pace towards plastic, online, and digital currencies, many Canadians, including many in my writing at Provence, are concerned with their ability to access and use, use cash as currency. For millions of Canadians, particularly the most vulnerable folks in our population, physical cash is essential to everyday life. Likewise, charities, community organizations, and remote communities rely on cash to achieve their worthy goals. Finally, in a world where governments, banks, and corporations are increasingly infringing on the privacy rights of Canadians, cash remains the only truly anonymous form of payment. This bill calls for a national framework to ensure continued access to and use of cash in Canada. It amends the Currency Act to limit the Minister's ability to arbitrarily and unilaterally call in banknotes and the Bank of Canada Act to ensure that the central bank does not develop or replace hard currency with a digital dollar. This common sense legislation will benefit vulnerable Canadians the most, but also those who work so hard to support them. I hope this House will support this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Speaker, we just learned moments ago that this government has been keeping a $20 billion secret. Wow. Common sense Conservatives have been demanding the government release the real cost of the carbon tax after the Parliamentary Budget Officer revealed that there was a report the government had been covering up and had gagged him from releasing about the actual cost to Canadians. Now, because Common Sense Conservatives brought forward this motion before the committee, yeah. before the House, because of our relentless questioning and the pressure that is weighing heavily on li uh, Liberal MPs, the government has finally relented and released part of the information. It had to be pulled out like a rotten tooth, <laughs> Madam Speaker, and rotten it is, $20 billion per year in lost GDP as a result of the carbon tax. That wow. works out to $1,200 per family wow. in extra annual costs for Canadians. $20 billion for 17 million families is $1,200 a family in higher costs that this Prime Minister has been covering up not once in any of the tables that he released to claim that Canadians were somehow better off with the carbon tax and rebate. Did he include these economic costs that he knew existed? Why? Because he wanted to continue to spread the falsehood. He wanted to tell Canadians that paying more for gas, heat, and groceries would make them better off. Just like he claimed that raising their income tax would make the middle class better off. 90% of middle class income taxpayers are now paying more than they were nine years ago when he promised to cut their taxes. And then of course yesterday, we tested their claim that only the $800,000 a year investment banker who's in the top 0.13% would pay this new tax, job killing tax on home building, farmers, small businesses, and healthcare. And we, we tested it by simply saying, sure, if that's the case, then you'll amend your bill to say that anybody who's part of the 99.87% of the population will be excluded from any new capital gains taxes, and the minister refused to do that because we all know that it will be plumbers, electricians, carpenters, farmers, small businesses, restaurant owners who will pay this liberal tax increase. What we're coming to understand is that you cannot believe a word this Prime Minister says about money or about taxes. Because at the end of the day, he has an insatiable appetite for other people's money. He wants to stuff the face of his obese, morbidly obese government 
with the hard-earned tax dollars of, of working-class Canadians. And he has the full support of the greedy NDP to do it. The NDP believes that your money is their money. And they are here for one purpose, to help the Prime Minister vacuum up every single nickel that hardworking Canadians, and including entrepreneurs, earn on the ground. But common sense Conservatives uh, are exactly the opposite. You'll notice that we take delight in the fact that we don't fit in in this place. We stand out. We stand out as the only party that will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. And we see with the bloc as well, the bloc voted for an increase in taxes on Quebec entrepreneurs, farmers, doctors, and home builders. Quebecers, according to the bloc, should pay more of their money to the federal liberal government, the colossal government. The bloc and the liberals are a centralizing coalition, Madam Speaker. We are the only party that wants to allow entrepreneurs, farmers, doctors, and small businesses of Quebec to keep their own money and to make their own decisions. It's the same thing with the tramway, Madam Speaker, a project that would cost at least $11 billion. That means $28,000 for each family in the Quebec City region. $28,000. If you ask families in that region, do you want $28,000 or do you want a tramway in 10 years? I think the decision is clear. The people of Quebec City want money in their pockets. They want a third link to connect the two sides of the river. That is common sense, and we are the only party of that opinion. No white elephants, no. We want to fix the budget and cut taxes. That is common sense, Madam Speaker. And, and so, uh, you know, here, here we are today uh, uh, with this government again raising taxes, again making claims that are demonstrably false when you look at their own documents. Look at the capital gains issue. First, the government claimed only 44,000 people will pay. Small number. But they all live on a hill somewhere. But then they admit that 300,000 separate businesses, most of them small businesses, will pay. So there's 300,000 businesses but only 44,000 will pay? Hmm, I find it hard to believe that each of these 44,000 people own six different businesses. No, in reality, those 300,000 businesses probably have millions of owners and definitely have millions of employees. All of them will pay the tax. Then they said, we're very concerned that welders are paying a higher tax rate than investors. They said, okay, why don't you just we have a NOC code, a, a National Occupation Code for a welder. You could say in the law that anybody who's a welder, as defined by the National Occupation Code, is excluded. Yeah, nope, true. she wouldn't do that. I said, I said, let's exclude the NOC code for carpenters. Yep. Nope, didn't want to do that either. Let's exclude, why don't we exclude nurses? Because the nurses uh, who, who uh, invest in rental properties or may have a uh, family cottage that they want to sell, they could ex exclude nurses. So go look up the knock code for nurses, d pop that right into the Income Tax Act, say no nurse will pay this higher tax rate. Nope, they weren't willing to do that either. In fact, we know that because they want to tax nurses, carpenters, welders, electricians. They want to tax everybody. In fact, I went even further. I said, why don't we just exclude everybody who makes less than $120,000 a year? Great idea. Nope. They don't want to do that either. Wow. So it turns out wow. if none of these people are affected by the tax, the minister should have said, oh, that's easy. Yeah, we can, we'll have that drafted up this afternoon. We'll put it in there, no problem. But of course not. 
because she knows exactly what she's doing. She's putting her greedy hands in the pockets of working class people and she's stealing their money just like she did with the carbon tax, just like they did when they raised income tax, just like they did in 2017 when they went after our small business tax creators. The good news is that we have defenders of the taxpayers in this party. The tax fighters are all on this side of the House, the common sense conservatives. And if you're out there and you're working hard, you've seen your housing costs double, you're worried about losing your home, you've got uh, two or even three jobs just to avoid eviction, you might feel a loss of hope. But the good news is that life was not like this before this Prime Minister and the NDP, and it won't be like this after they're gone. Here, here. We're going to bring home the Canada that we knew and still love by axing the tax, building the homes, fixing the budget, and stopping the crime. We will make, once again make this a country where hard work pays off, where our entrepreneurs are incentivized and rewarded and honored, not demonized. Where we don't turn workers against business owners, we turn workers into business owners. Yeah, In a country yeah. where hard work brings a powerful paycheck and pension that buys affordable food, gas, and uh, food and homes in safe neighborhoods. That is what the common people deserve, the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Questions and comments? The Honourable Government Deputy House Leader. Madam Speaker, what we're seeing here is nothing more than a desperate attempt by Conservatives to deflect from what's really going on. You know, the member, the Conservative Leader, brought in a motion into this House today and then barely even spoke to it because he got the data moments ago, the data that he had been asking for. Not a report, but data. He got all that data, and the data didn't fit his narrative. Just like we're seeing the Conservative Leader today going on about his newfound uh, desire to be against a capital gains tax. For two months, Conservatives sat silent, wouldn't say a word about it. This leader wouldn't say a word about the capital gains tax. Now, suddenly, after two months, we're expected to believe that he has suddenly come to the realization that this is going to be bad for Canadians. No. What he's trying to do is to tap into anxieties and fears of Canadians. What I want to know about this motion is what is his plan for the environment? It can't be more than slogans about technology. The Honourable Official Opposition House Leader. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Official Opposition Leader. <laughs> Hard to figure out what part of that meandering, rambling rant uh, to focus on, Madam Speaker. Let's start with the two months. Well, it was two months. The two months that went by were the time during which the minister refused to introduce any bill to actually apply her latest tax increase, her job killing tax increase on home building, on houses, uh, on health care, on small businesses, and on uh, Canadians. She went, she went two months. Why? Not because of some brilliant strategy, but because she didn't have any clue what she was doing. She didn't know how to write the rules that she had blurted out in her budget. And then she spent months uh, flipping and flopping behind the scenes, telling doctors and uh, high-tech investors and home builders that they might get an exemption if they were very nice and if their lobbyists sucked up enough. Finally, she introduced a bill, and within a day of the, its introduction, we stated our position on it. We're against this latest job-killing tax on Canadians. Is the Conservative leader able to uh, tell us, uh, you know, stop treating... Uh, 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 Quebecers uh, like children, what choices will you make about mobility? And could the Conservative leader, if one day he were to become Prime Minister, would he commit to giving Quebec the necessary funds so that it can make its own choices and uh, decide itself and make its own choices about mobility? Would he give that money with no conditions? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The only leader who's listening to people uh, from uh, Quebec's uh, regions including the 70% who are against the tramway, we know why. It's a giant white elephant, Madam Speaker. It's going to cost $11 billion. That means 
$28,000 for every family in the region. $28,000 for a project that is not going to serve uh, the majority of people who live in the area. We should cut the waste, support projects which make good sense, like uh, uh, a third uh, highway link, and fix the budget. That's not magic, as the member says. That's good common sense. We have time for a brief question. The Honourable Member for Timmins, James Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's fascinating. All of Canada is asking about foreign interference and, and actually having credible leadership on this. And yet we have one leader who either can't get security clearance or refuses to get security clearance. So he's in here doing another gong show on the same issue again and again, and yet he has not explained to Canadians why he cannot get security clearance. What kind of leader is refusing to understand the threats to our country? I'd like to hear from the member from Stornoway. So I, before before I, I get to the to the honourable leader of the, of the official opposition, I just want to remind members they seem to want to have conversations while others have the floor, and it's going across the way. So I ask members if they want to have conversations to please take it out. The honourable uh, leader of the official opposition. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker, I would call him the member for Timmins, James Bay, Bames Bay, but I'm not sure he's ever actually been to Timmins. Uh, actually, he doesn't live in the riding. He never goes to his riding. Uh, the people. People in, in that community think that he is in the witness protection program, that is if they've heard of him at all. And when I last said this in the House of Commons, a week later he decided to turn tail and run. He announced he's not running again because he knows very well that the common sense loggers, miners and farmers were going to fire him in the next election and elect a common sense conservative.